Good morning, boys and girls, tambourine players, tuba players, shakers, players. Welcome to our 15th session. Uh, talking about writing for horns for your rock and roll and jazz group. Uh, we had just had a lot of sessions on writing for four or five part, passing chords and that sort of thing. So now, after we get these voicings figured out, we're going to tell the guys how we want them to play these notes. In the last session, we got into some articulation, short, long, legato, staccato, how to handle quarter notes, whether the quarter notes are going to be played long or short, uh, <clears throat> which is really important. Um, so now I want to get into how, let's get into some volume issues, crescendo, decrescendo, how loud they're going to play. There's a lot of latitude in how loud the instruments can play. Uh, there's like quadruple pianissimo and I don't know what the actual jargon is for that or quadruple forte. I asked my brother Scott, he knows all that kind of stuff. But I don't use it very much. I mean, I basically, because I'm basically in a jazz scenario or in a rock scenario, I use, I'll use pianissimo, mezzo piano, mezzo forte, or forte. Those are the main ones I use, okay? Uh, because when you get into, and, and typically if I'm just writing, let's say the band, you're in a rock band and they're just, or even a jazz fusion environment, and they're just playing their normal volume, I write, I write mezzo forte. Uh, if I wanted to play a little soft passages to take it kind of easy, uh, mezzo piano. And then if I really wanted to play soft, I write mezzo piano. And you can be more explicit in the rehearsals too. And loud is forte. So let's take a typical, here's a bar. And let's say here's our notes. Very standard. You see that rhythm all the time. Boo doo ba. How are we going to play that quarter note? Ba da da. Is it going to be legato? Or nine times out of ten, it's going to be that. Well, it doesn't have to be that big. I just put a, a dot over. So, ba da da. And if we want to kick this accent, that and a two a little bit more, put one of those on there. Ba da ba. Two, three, four. Boo ba ba. Okay? Then, so let's say we make it mezzo forte. <clears throat> Typically with horns, anytime, I wouldn't say all the time, but 80% of the time, when they're holding a note, they're going to do a little crescendo just to kind of make it happen, you know. So, especially when they're holding notes, they can crescendo, decrescendo through a series of notes, but typically when they're holding a note at the end of a phrase, uh, they will crescendo. So that will look like this. Okay? And if you like, you can put a forte at the end of it there. So, boo -doo, ba you got that happening. Instead of boo -doo, ba it's a little more expressive if they crescendo. boo -doo, ba now, sometimes I'll do this at the end of a phrase. I'll go like this. I'll decrescendo. Okay? Boo doo ba. See? I'll fall down. You can even be more explicit. You could just have them quiet to a pianissimo, to soft. I like to put a little deal on it like that. Um, <clears throat> So that's something to con to uh, to look at. Um, so that's basically what you need to worry about on that. There's some other things you can do um, that are fun, especially with horns, is like a fall. So let's say um, you've got a quarter note rest, and let's say here's your trumpet and here's your tenor, and they're in octaves, okay? Uh, you're going to do this, and let's say they're going to accent that, and you want them to go one, bow. You could do a fall, okay, like that. That's a good thing to have. Boom, bow. Now, depending on how f they could either go, oh, the egg timer. 
I gotta have my egg timer, otherwise I'll go on for 20 minutes and realize that I've, you know. So that's my little egg timer, it helps me along. I use it a lot for cooking too, because that way I don't burn things or overcook the pasta, because my wife likes her pasta al dente. Anyway, depending on how long you want that fall, if you want it longer, you just go like this. Now, if you write it like that, and let's say it's here, you got a half rest, right? Here's the end of the, then it's a one bow. But if you want it short, room bow, just like that. So we'll get into some more. Uh, there's a couple uh, other things we can talk about. There's a a, a, a forzando, which is F and Z, which is ba like that. You hear that a lot. One of my favorite Chicago records. I think it's on their first uh, album, the first song called Introduction. There's a killer forzando on there right before or during a guitar solo. And it's just like in this scenario, on two. So they make a strong accent on the and then they come down and then they one, like that, forzando. That's a great one. I love those. I don't use them very often. You don't use them very often, but they're they're effective, especially if they're going to play. If you're going to tie, if you're going to make this a, now it's turning into a big. Well, here, ba da ba, like right here, you could do it. You know, boo doo ba. Anyway, we'll get more into that. Also, what I want to get into is now we got to lay out our chart. We got our notes. We're gonna, we showed them how we're going to play the notes, and now we're going to we need to lay out a chart. So. And there's, you know, I've been handed zillions of charts over the years playing in other people's groups, and I've seen a lot of funny stuff. But and there's a right way to to do that. So uh, shoot me an email, Fred at FredStickley.com, and any questions, any comments, want to shed any more light on the subject, would love to hear from you. Uh, like to know that there's folks out in cyberspace. <laughs> anyway, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time.